In this video, we're going to talk about sprints on ClickUp. My name is Katie Bunny and I scale businesses to half a million and a million per month. And using a project management tool is something that I advise all my clients because it's impossible for you to scale if you don't have a project management tool and more importantly, if you don't have sprints. So let's get started with the first question that you may have. What is a sprint? Because if you fully understand what a sprint is, then you will understand how to use it in the best way possible for yourself. So a sprint is a time box period during which your team works on a defined set of tasks. So that means as you're scaling, you have multiple clients and multiple tasks, right? Like you could ask your team to complete all the tasks in the world within a week. Like you could ask them to complete 50 or hundred tasks or all the tasks that you have for a client, but that is not realistic. So what you need to do, and you need to understand with the agile methodology for project management, we use sprints. So that means on a week to week basis, you have a focus. Now I said week to week, but in the tech space, for example, where people are creating software, it's usually two weeks that a sprint lasts. For your agency, I recommend having one week sprints. When you have two weeks, it's way too long and it is easy for things to get lost or tasks to be delayed. So I highly recommend that you stay on top of your tasks by having one week sprints. And within this one week, you get your team to complete 50 tasks or 100 tasks, and it is only that that they need to focus on. So at the beginning of the week or every Thursday or Friday of the previous week, you start planning and strategizing. You set the goals for the next week and you ask yourself, what do I need to complete next week to make sure that the week is successful and we've moved things forward? So it really requires for you to sit down or any project manager you have in your team to sit down and look into all the tasks and set goals. So you have a list of tasks and what you're going to do is put them into sprints. For example, this week we're going to focus on these 10 tasks and next week we're going to focus on 10 other tasks. And then you get your team to execute, you review the output to make sure the quality is there and then you deliver to your clients. You see, when you use sprints, there is some quality assurance happening and it's not just like your team executing it and you try to launch as soon as possible or like your team is super stressed because every day could be like random and they don't know what to expect. So maybe it is busy, maybe it's not busy. Some days they're wasting time because they're doing nothing. So it is really important as a project manager or like leader in your business that you go in, you strategize and you create the sprints for your team. Now, a few benefits on sprints. You make sure that there is progress every single week. Right. Even if you don't have client tasks, you can work on internal tasks or like other projects that you are really wanting to work on. This way, there is progress made every single week and every week is successful because if every week is successful then the month is successful and the year is successful, then the business is successful. You have high quality delivery because your team is not rushed to complete tasks, but instead they have time allocated to complete their tasks and you make sure that the quality is there. There is also transparency and accountability, right? You know these people in some teams where you don't necessarily know how productive they're being and how many tasks they're completing in a week. That is because you're not using sprints. If you are using sprints, then you know how much every person needs to work on their tasks. And also on ClickUp, for example, right here, you can check exactly what is happening within your team. You can check in this list how many tasks we have per sprint. As you can see here, every sprint comes into like a folder and you have lists. So then here you can check how much every team member is working. You can also create a view where you can go and check the workload. So that also makes it easy for you to visualize capacity and know how much your team members are working every single week. And then you also have a report. So this way, you know how many tasks are started, not started, overdue. And then you can start also reporting back to like your team leaders or like the business owner, like, hey, this person is not being productive. Here is proof. If you have proof, you can make a case. If you don't have proof, you cannot make a case. And then you have these people that are getting paid and producing absolutely nothing in the team. The next one is you have increased productivity because your team knows what they need to focus on on the week. Then, for example, if they have completed their task for Tuesday, they can just go and start their task for Wednesday. Yes, you can get your team members to actually take care of tasks sooner, or you can give them some extra tasks if you see that the sprint does not have enough tasks. And you also make sure that your clients that you're delivering to have set expectations. So that means every single week you're delivering to your clients, even if you have 20, even if you have 30 or 50 clients, my team is delivering to our clients every single week. We're building so many automations every single week because we're using sprints. Now there's also another thing I want to show you about sprints over here. Sprints are a feature on ClickUp. Now they're a feature on other project management tools as well. 
I personally use Jira. It is built for software developers and you can use Jira for that. But I also really like ClickUp and I always build systems with sprints on ClickUp. And you can activate sprints by making sure that you have the ClickUps active on the folder right here. So you can go on any space and you can make sure that on your ClickUps you have sprints activated. They are selected here. If I remove it, I select it, I mark it as done. And then I can go and create it and create the views, have the statuses and all this, right? So every week a sprint is created. And then how do you add your tasks on the sprint? Let's go and look into this. So I use folders per client account. So if we're managing, let's say, a client for multiple months or like it's a, a client is on a retainer, then I'm not going to add their tasks just on the sprint. I have a folder dedicated to the client and then I have a list with the account management tasks, right? So for example, here I have all the tasks and then you can create right here on the plus button. If you click on it, then you're going to see the sprint and then you can add to sprint by clicking here and you can select add to sprint, right? I'm going to create a separate video where I can show you how you can actually also automate this based on the start date and the due date of the task. But on this video, I wanted to just give you an introduction to this whole thing. And then you can also select multiple tasks at a time, and then you can add them to lists. You can click here, move add, and then you can add them on a specific sprint that you want to add them on. Now, the idea here is that when you're adding tasks to sprints, it means that your team is going to commit to complete the tasks on this sprint. But if let's say the due date is across multiple sprints, like two or three sprints, then that means you need to add the tasks on both sprints. Okay. And here's what that looks like. For example, you could have the list right here. You have the different tasks. And the point here with the sprints is that this is not a new task. This is just a task that is also reflecting on this list. It is pretty much like a smart view where you see only the tasks that you're going to focus on for this week. All right. So that is pretty much it. Now you may have some questions that I've heard often. And the first one is where are tasks stored? The tasks are stored in the initial list. For example, if you have the account management list for John Smith, then the original task is stored here. It is also stored in the sprint, but the actual place where you're storing it and it is the location of the task is the list within the folder. Okay. The next question I always get is what if I have urgent tasks? Like, oh my God, my business is so volatile. Uh, I cannot predict what is going to happen in the week. So first of all, I want you to be realistic about it. Not all tasks are that volatile. You can predict that you need to complete certain tasks for a client every single week, or it's going to be on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. So let's be realistic about this. And let's be honest that not everything is as volatile or as urgent or last minute as we make it seem, right? Of course, you're going to have clients that are going to ask for a last minute thing or like, oh, can we do this today? Can we do this tomorrow? But then as you're telling your clients that you have weekly sprints, you're going to also set their expectations because if you don't have sprints and you're constantly unorganized, your client is going to expect that you just work on whatever tasks, right? But if you are organized and you tell your clients like, Hey, we're going to focus on this on the next sprint, not on this sprint, then your clients are going to start respecting these timelines and these deadlines that you have, because you're making it clear for them that you have a focus for the week, which allows them to understand that if they want to make requests, they need to make it ahead of time and not just last minute. So at the same time, you're also setting boundaries with your clients. Okay. But one thing you need to account for is that sprints should not always be a hundred percent. You should expect that your team is working five hours on the predefined sprint tasks. And then they have some hours, like one or two hours every single day to work on some urgent tasks, or maybe a task is going to take longer. So don't try to make it like a hundred percent, all the tasks. I'm going to guess what is going to happen in the next few days, because truth is there's going to always be urgent and last minute tasks. So when it comes to planning for your team, you always need to have 70 or 80% of their tasks on the sprint, and then just leave the other 20 or 30% for urgent tasks, last minute tasks, or like last minute requests from yourself, your project manager, or your client. And the next one is what if I don't complete all the tasks in a sprint? And this is a question I get also from business owners that have teams that are not really performing. Now there are two reasons why this could be happening. The first one is because your team is not productive. And what you need to understand is that this is an accountability tool. So if your team 
confirms that this print is looking fine and they can complete their task at the beginning of the week, then if at the end of the week they haven't completed their task, well then you need to ask them why is that the case? Why didn't they complete their tasks? And is there something that we overestimated? Or was there something that went wrong? You really need to do that retrospective to understand what happened through that sprint that made it so that they cannot complete their tasks. And if you see that it is a performance issue, then of course you're going to have some hard conversations with your team members and potentially let go of people. But if it is that you're overestimating your team's capacity, then you also need to start slowing a little bit down and making sure that you understand how many tasks your team is completing on average every single week. For that, you can also use the velocity chart, which allows you over here to check. With the velocity chart, you can check how many tasks your team is completing every single week. The velocity chart allows you to see like how many were forecasted, how many were completed, um, and then the rolling average velocity. So then you know on average how many tasks and how many hours your team is working every single week. So you can get more familiar with these terms like the velocity chart and the burn down and the burn up charts uh, with the links in the description. I'm going to add some links from ClickUp so then you can check directly with the ClickUp assets what these terms mean so then you can get a bit more familiar. And that's it pretty much when it comes to sprints. So to sum everything up, a sprint is a time box period where you or your team need to complete a certain set of tasks. And usually that should be one week for an agency. If you are developers or like a software company or you're building video games, then you can do two week sprints. But I always recommend one week sprint if you want to stay on top of things and make sure that there is progress every single week. The next thing is you need to prepare your sprints before the start of the week. So every Thursday or Friday, you as a project manager with the business owner, you need to work together to prepare the goals for next week. And then when you're creating those sprints, you always need to fill it up with 80% of your team's capacity or even 70%. So that means you have time for urgent or last minute tasks. When you're using sprints, there is predictability in your team. And that means your team knows what to expect and they are performing even better than when you would give them last minute tasks. You make sure that every week there is progress and things are moving forward. So, as I use this tool for my clients and for myself, I also want you to start using it for yourself. Check out the articles below. And if you want us to come in and build these systems for you, if you're scaling to half a million or a million per month, then check also the link in the description to book a call with me or my team. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer in the comments below. Take care.